I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, March the 11th, 2014. Israel's Air Force early this morning struck a Palestinian terror cell in southern Gaza after it opened fire on IDF soldiers. The Islamic Jihad terror cell was identified as firing mortar shells at IDF soldiers from the Infantry and Engineering Corps while they were conducting routine security work along the Israeli-Gaza border. They came under attack from the terror cell, but there were no injuries reported. The Islamic Jihad said that three of its militants were killed in the retaliatory strike. The IDF reiterated its stance that it will not tolerate any attack on its military forces operating along the border. A Palestinian man who was hurling rocks at vehicles in the West Bank was shot and killed by an IDF soldier late last night. According to initial reports, that man, together with another Palestinian, was throwing rocks at an Israeli car and bus that were traveling along Route 60 in the West Bank last night between the settlements of Beit El and Ofra, north of Ramallah. Soldiers arrived on the scene and opened fire. The IDF released a statement and said that during an ambush attempting to capture stone throwers not far from Beit El, the IDF opened fire on a Palestinian who was throwing stones. The Palestinian was injured and later died of his wounds, adding that the military police corps has opened an investigation concerning the incident. In a separate incident last night, shots were fired toward a home in the Beit El settlements. The IDF was investigating that incident as well and searching the area. No injuries were reported. The IDF has reached a preliminary conclusion in yesterday's incident at the Allenby crossing on the Israeli-Jordanian border. As we reported to you, a Palestinian-born man named as Raid Zaiter, who worked in Jordan as a judge and had Jordanian citizenship, was shot and killed after he attacked a group of IDF soldiers who were stationed at the crossing. The IDF said the initial findings of the investigation indicate that the man charged at the soldiers with a metal pole or rod shouting Allahu Akbar, God is great in Arabic, and then tried to seize one of the soldiers' weapons. The other soldiers responded according to protocol by firing towards the attacker's legs. The IDF said the suspect then began to strangle a soldier and the forces resorted to using live fire once again. Investigators from Israel police, together with the Shin Bet, Israel's security service, have so far determined that the soldiers acted properly, given that Zayater, quote, posed a clear danger to their lives. The army said it is continuing the investigation and also has communicated to Jordan that they would keep them up to date with any new developments in the incident. Protesters in Amman had gathered outside the Israeli embassy there late last night, calling for the cancellation of the peace treaty between Israel and Jordan, and Israel was apparently working hard to try and calm tensions with the Hashemite kingdom over the incident. French news agency AFP reports that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expressed regret after the death of the Jordanian judge. Netanyahu's office released a statement saying Israel regrets the death of Judge Raid Zaiter and expresses its sympathy to the people and government of Jordan. It said that in light of our commitment to the peace treaty, Israel has already shared with Jordan the results of its preliminary investigation of the incident, and added that Israel has also agreed to a request from Jordan to establish a joint Israeli-Jordanian team to conduct its own investigation into the incident, which would be getting underway very soon. British Prime Minister David Cameron will be arriving in Israel tomorrow for a two-day trip where he will meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as well as with President Shimon Peres. He will address Israel's Knesset as well. Cameron will also be traveling to Bethlehem where he will be meeting with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. The visit tomorrow marks his first to Israel as Prime Minister. The Israel Democracy Institute, in conjunction with Tel Aviv University, released a new study today which shows that the majority of Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs are skeptical about the framework deal expected to be presented by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry next month. The main concern reflected in the new Peace Index poll seems to be of security among both Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs 
who were surveyed. 66% of Israeli Jews and 53% of Arab Israelis said they don't trust Kerry to take Israel's security needs into account as a crucial factor in his proposed framework agreement. They said they believe Kerry's main motivation for peace was to make history and succeed where others have failed in the past. The study was conducted last week among 603 respondents. A similar poll from this past December showed much greater support for the Kerry Initiative, and Ynet reports that the change may be attributed to the deadline for the extension of the talks fast approaching, as well as a rise in tension and incidents from, between Israel and the Palestinians, in particular recent rocket attacks on Israel from Gaza. The IDF and U.S. Marines conducted a bilateral training exercise this week in Israel. The IDF said on Sunday that the exercise, like others before it, was pre-planned and routine and not in response to any particular events. The IDF said the purpose of the exercise was to, quote, improve collaboration and interoperability, understanding and cooperation between the IDF and U.S. forces. Israel's ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer, addressed the Israeli-American Council Sunday night in Los Angeles at the IAC's sixth annual gala, where the new ambassador reiterated that Israel will do whatever it needs to do to defend itself against the threat of a nuclear Iran. Dermer was the keynote speaker at the gala, where he said Iran is the single most important issue facing Israel, and we need to prevent Iran from building a nuclear weapons capability, not just nuclear weapons, and I can assure you, he said, that the Prime Minister of Israel is not going to allow Iran's regime to develop nuclear weapons. I can assure you that Prime Minister Netanyahu will do whatever he must do to defend the Jewish state. Dermer also addressed ongoing peace efforts with the Palestinians and said that Israel wants a real and genuine peace based on mutual recognition. The IAC is an umbrella organization representing half a million Israelis and their children living in the U.S. They work to build an active and giving Israeli-American community in order to strengthen the Jewish state as well as Jewish identity here in the U.S. And the Jewish Week reports that at another gala Sunday night, Zionist organization of America leader Mort Klein was re-elected as national president at the organization's 97th National Convention, which was held this past Sunday in Philadelphia. Klein won 93% of the vote against the group's vice chairman, Stephen Goldberg. The Associated Press reports that France has returned three paintings that were stolen by the Nazis during World War II. In an official ceremony, France's culture minister returned the art to the grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the original owners, who are now deceased, in what he called a gesture toward justice. The paintings include Madonna and Child by 14th century master Lipo Memi, an 18th century work by an unknown artist titled Portrait of a Woman, and Mountain Landscape by Flemish artist Jos de Bomper, which Hitler apparently was planning to display in the art gallery that he wanted to build in his hometown of Linz, Austria. The AP said the return of these pieces was part of France's ongoing effort to return hundreds of paintings stolen from the Jewish community during the Holocaust that still are on display in museums in France. Thank you for not And mentioning. turning to our Shalom TV programming for tonight, Tuesday, March the 11th. Coming up at 7.30, Senator John McCain addresses the recent APAC National Policy Conference in Washington, D.C. Then on L'Chaim at 9.30, Sandra Flom, founder and chair of Fordham Leadership Forum at the Schools of Business, talks about coping with unemployment. And then at 10 o'clock, Rabbi Ori Regev addresses the recent Limud conference on the topic of Who is a Jew? A Biblical, Halachic, Legal, and Political Survey. That's all coming up tonight here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, March the 11th, 2014. I'm Tisha Bader.